About a year ago, an outdoor brand reached out to me and they reached out to me because they wanted to share my breast cancer story as part of a promotion for one of their products. And I spent all this time uh, on the phone with the person who was in charge of this breast cancer campaign for this particular brand. I spent a lot of time sharing my story with them. I wrote a bunch of stuff that they could share in their marketing material and they promised me compensation for my time. And I was sharing my breast cancer story so they could sell a product. Anyway, they never compensated me and I felt extremely used and I was so disappointed in this certain brand. I will never buy their product again. I felt so disappointed in this brand that they would use me to share my story of breast cancer to sell their product and not even have the courtesy to open up their contract and compensate me like they said that they would. Today I'm talking about things I'm no longer doing in 2025 and surprise, brand partnerships is one of them. Here's the rest. 2024 has been a wild year. It's actually the first time since 2015 that Hike Like a Woman has been my full-time job. I sold my outdoor retail store and ski shop last November, like a year ago. And it's been incredible to just spend the entire year focused on nothing but hike like a woman and leading women on epic adventures all over the world. But since it was my first year back in the driver's seat of hike like a woman, I've learned a lot. And here are five things that I am no longer going to be doing in 2025. First, our virtual summit. If you joined us for our virtual summit in April and you loved it, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're not going to be doing our virtual summit again. It was a lot of work and I'm glad I did it. I worked really hard to try to find women with really compelling stories who could give really amazing presentations and teach us and inspire us with all of their knowledge but I actually had several women commit to giving presentations and then completely ghost me or didn't get their presentations to me at all. So at the last minute, I found myself freaking out and trying to figure out how to give these presentations myself that had been promised and it was extremely stressful. I loved hosting the virtual summit. I loved connecting with the speakers who were awesome, who showed up and put a lot of time and effort into their presentations. And I loved connecting in the comments as the presentations were being played live. But I've decided after leading almost 60 women uh, on adventures and on three different continents, I've just decided that I really prefer in-person adventures to virtual events. You're not gonna see a virtual event from us in 2025, but you're still gonna see in-person events. And to me, that's what it's all about, connecting online first and then being able to connect in person. Next, I am going to be switching tour operators. For the past couple years, we have used a certain company to put together most of our trips, except for our trip to Costa Rica, which we go direct with a guiding company there. I have not been super happy with some of the guides and some of the itineraries put together by this particular company. And I'm not gonna call them out here because we're still leading trips with them through 2025 because I have to book trips a year out. Right now, I am looking at different options and different tour companies that we can use for future trips. Companies that might be able to make the trips a little bit more affordable while still being able to pay me a little bit because that's how I make a living. Stay tuned, I'm looking for a company that's like a, I wanna be better and I wanna provide a better guest experience kind of a company. I'm not happy with a company that's just gonna phone it in and not work hard to make sure that people who join me on a trip have an incredible experience. Right now I'm looking for a different tour operator to start providing us in-person events. In 2026, we're gonna have some more unique destinations, hopefully with some better tour companies. The next thing that I am not doing in 2025 is feeling like I'm at the mercy of YouTube algorithms and social media algorithms. I used to get so frustrated when I would spend a lot of time on a video or producing something on social media and then nobody would see it. And I'd be like, come on, that's good content. I put a lot of effort and a lot of work into that. And then I'd be discouraged because it would just be cricket. Lately, I've decided that I don't really care anymore if 
30 of you watch this video, then that's awesome. That is 30 people who watch this video. That is so cool. If I had a room full of 30 people, that would be amazing. I'm done chasing the algorithm. I'm just gonna put myself out there as like, this is me, this is real authentic Rebecca out on a hike today, this is who I am, and this is what I wanna talk about. And if the algorithm doesn't like that, then that's fine. The right people who need to see this video are gonna find this video. Here's what you can expect from me though. We're working really hard to produce two YouTube videos a week. So Monday, more of a vlog style video like this one, Friday, more of an adventure gear kind of video. So two videos a week, our newsletter every single Monday and our pod drops every single Tuesday. So that's four pieces of really big content that I'm producing here at Hike Like a Woman every week. And I think that's pretty cool. And if the algorithm picks up one of those things, awesome. If it picks up zero of those things, oh well. If it picks up four of those things, then that's amazing. The next thing that I'm not doing in 2025 is podcast interviews. I think that what happens is sometimes people see we have a podcast and then they see how many followers we have on social media. And then they think if I get on that podcast, I can share my message with 100,000 people, but that's not always how it works. I've found that a lot of times people wanna come on our podcast, not because they want to like have a mutual partnership, uh, but because they just want their story to be seen in front of our audience. In the past, I've tried to be really good about making sure that everyone has a voice and giving people space on our, on our website and on our podcast and even on our YouTube channel. But I found that sometimes I feel a little bit used, like I feel like people just want to come and take advantage of our large audience, but never want to return the favor. It's not mutually beneficial. It's self-serving. I want to be generous and I want to give everyone a platform and everyone a voice, but I can't do it. I don't enjoy doing podcast interviews. I don't enjoy the prep work that goes into the podcast interview. I don't enjoy Google stalking someone to come up with compelling questions to ask them. I don't necessarily enjoy interviewing someone for the podcast. Uh, I don't enjoy editing the podcast interviews and it's been some of our lowest watched content here on our YouTube channel and some of the episodes on our podcast with the fewest downloads. That shows me that interviews are not something that's really resonating with our community right now. This year, I'm not doing podcast interviews. That might change in 2026 as I try to figure out what to do with our podcast, but for now, it's not something I enjoy. It's something that takes up a lot of time. It's not something that I feel like serves me and it's not something you want to see so we're just not going to be doing interviews in 2025. Next up, brand partnerships. <laughs> oh, this one is hard because I get offers from brands all the time and they're usually saying, hey, if I send you this free jacket, will you share it on your social media or will you do a video about it? And then I typically respond with, here's my rate to do a sponsored video or a sponsored post then the brand comes back and they wanna negotiate the rate down or they don't come back at all. And if you're a brand out there and you want me to review a product for you in 2025, I'm just not gonna do it. Because I found that, first of all, when it comes to getting something free in the mail, I love free stuff. Who doesn't love free stuff? But it's really easy for me to fall in love with a product that I get for free. And also, gear usually holds up pretty great the first year, the second year. It's like the third, fourth, fifth year that the gear and the clothing just starts to fall apart and not perform as well because it's made in crappy factories overseas. To me, it, the test of a product is a product that lasts a really, really long time, a product that lasts long enough that you can get multi-generations of use out of it, a product that's not gonna be in a landfill within two years. When a brand reaches out because they want a partner, it's usually because they have a new product coming out that they want me to promote, but I can't really promote a new product because I don't know how it's gonna perform later down the road. So I'm just not gonna do brand partnerships. They're not worth my time. They're not that fun. And I'm a lot more interested in gear that's going to last forever. And I'm much more interested in the gear that I have in my closet that's been there for five, six, seven, eight years. 